Hello and welcome to the special episode of Women Tech Makers. My name is Alex Meyer and I'm the Community Manager at Google Cloud Platform. Today with me are Karen Sandler, the Executive Director of the GNOME Foundation. Hello, Karen. Hi, Alex. How's it going? Pretty good. And I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to talk about the Outreach Program for Women. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to have you on the show. My second guest today is Marina Zorohinskaya, who is the community lead at Red Hat. How are you doing, Marina? Yes, hi, I'm doing well and uh, very excited to be on the program as well. Wonderful. So uh, as you mentioned earlier, we are here to talk about the uh, Women Outreach Program at um, GNOME. Uh, Marina, can you tell us a little bit about it? Right, so the very first uh, kind of precursory program uh, was the Women's Summer Outreach Program uh, that was done by the GNOME Foundation in 2006. And the reason we did that uh, was um, uh, that we participated in Google Summer of Code, uh, the great opportunity that Google has for students uh, to have paid remote internships working with a mentor on an open source project. Um, and we participated in that program since 2005 when it started. And in 2006, we had 180 applicants and none of them appeared to be women. So that was the first time that when um, Hannah Wallach and Chris Ball uh, put together a two-month program very similar to Google Summer of Code. And when they put this call out, they in fact had 100 applicants for the program. And over the next few years, uh, we noticed that that did not actually leave a lasting uh, impact on our community. So in uh, 2009, uh, when I was one of the eight women in the, at the conference and one of the four women who were software developers with the project from among about a thousand contributors, um, and we still had maybe one or no women in Google Summer of Code each year, we decided to uh, kind of reinvent the program and, uh, and uh, start offering the internships. How long has the program been in existence? Since 2010, and we had had 130 participants. We do two rounds a year because we have to catch up so much. And we are noticing that there are advantages to both doing um, a kind of May through August round and uh, a December to March round, and uh, in particular, December to March round appeals to student in this, students in the Southern Hemisphere. But uh, two main differences uh, from Google Summer of Code is that we are actually open to non-students as well, and uh, that is a big part of uh, our participants are not students. And also we have non-coding tasks in addition to coding tasks. Oh, that's great. So Karen, what is GNOME Foundation's role in all of this? Well, so the GNOME Foundation organized the program. When we originally founded the program, it was for the GNOME project. And we found that the program had such a big impact on our project. It was bringing so many extraordinary women. Um, we went from having, as Marina said, 4% women at our annual conference, which is called Guadic, to having um, this year, we recently had 18%, which uh, is, is often a, a statistic given as the number of women in proprietary software. And the, the gap between uh, free software and proprietary software uh, was very wide in terms of how many women that were participating, which was um, really surprising. So, um, so we we've had this this major change in in GNOME, and because it was so good for GNOME, we decided we couldn't keep it to ourselves. So, what we did was we opened it up to other free software projects um, who also were interested in trying to help solve this problem. So, we now have over 20 projects participating in the. Um, the outreach program for women, including um, the Linux kernel and Mozilla and Wikimedia, um, a lot of great organizations. We have both Debian and Fedora. Um, it's 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 pretty fun, and um, different projects participate during different rounds. And the GNOME Foundation uh, serves as the um, as the overall organizer for the project. Um, as as Googlers know, the summer, summer of Code is a is a massive and inspirational program. It's amazing, um, but it's uh, it's I honestly have no idea how Google handles it. It's such a big and um, amazing project, but um, but for us having this smaller program where we now have um, in this particular round we have you know around 30 participants. Um, you know, it's it's a lot for a small nonprofit organization to handle, but we do so for for all of the free software projects participating, and I think it works out well. This is great. So, um, have you experienced any growth in the past, you know, since 2010 in the number of participants, or are you trying to keep it steady? Oh, absolutely. And uh, we started with about uh, 10 participants each round uh, with the GNOME project. 
Uh, but and then uh, Karen uh, was the one who, uh, when she stepped in as the executive director, she suggested that we expand the program. And first, we did uh, a pilot round, expanding the program to just one uh, project, uh, which was uh, the Twisted Project with the Software Freedom Conservancy. And as any uh, programmer knows, expanding one to two is almost as hard as expanding as two to many. So that was like the first step. And then after that, when we expanded to having uh, about uh, 10 uh, participating organizations in each round. We have had about 30 participants in each round uh, for the last three rounds. This is great. So what kind of tasks can women expect when they participate in your program? What can they choose from? So there's really a wide variety of tasks that, or, or projects that, um, that women can work on when they join the Outreach Program for Women. Um, as Marina was saying, one of the, the key differences between Outreach Program for Women and Google Summer of Code is that our program welcomes women in um, to do other things that are non-coding tasks, which is really valuable for attracting uh, women to free software. So um, for example, we have marketing internships and um, design internships and things like that. And um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's several things. One is that it's an acknowledgment that free software and software in general need so much more than just coding um, and having you know, valuing contributions in those fields is really important. Um, another thing is that sometimes women who are interested in coding find it a little more um, accessible to come in in some of those other projects. So um, I, for example, had an intern who I was the mentor for who, um, who did marketing, and she had such a good experience with her outreach program for women that she took uh, coding classes and she participated in summer of code. So we have some of that happening as well. So um, I think it's 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 twofold. It's valuing the non-coding side of free software and also recognizing that um, that you know helping women build communities with you know build relationships within our community is also really valuable. So how how would a woman who wanted to participate in this program uh, be able to join? What does she need to do? And what can she expect when she first establishes contact? So uh, we, what we require of um, all the participating organizations is uh, to have a list of mentors who are available anytime throughout the year uh, for the prospective participants to approach and to work with informally uh, on contributing uh, to the project. Uh, and uh, a very strong and um, requirement that we have uh, for the program uh, for, the, for the applicants is that they need to make uh, a relevant contribution uh, during their application process. And we offer the informal mentorship and help uh, during that time. Um, so just going over the um, available um, organizations and available projects and conducting a mentor and just following uh, the guidelines from the organization about how to get started um, and actually getting started diving in uh, is the best recipe for planning to apply. I love this part of the, prog the program because it basically assists all applicants in getting involved in free software projects. So even we we have to be very selective. We don't have funding for a lot of spots, um, and so it's very hard to always choose the women that we wind up selecting. But all of the women who apply have the opportunity to work with a mentor and have the opportunity to become a contributor to a free and open source software project. So just the application process alone is really valuable to go through. And um, we do find that women who go through the process sometimes um, even if they didn't um, get the internship during the time that they applied, if they stuck around and continu continued to contribute, they become a much stronger candidate for the next round. And so even though you know we get many more applicants than we can accept, every woman who completes an application has become a contributor to a free and open source software project. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of our participants uh, describe this first contribution as something that got them hooked, that showed to them how addictive contributing to free software is because it's a thrill to, to, to be able to see your changes go out and be publicly available and be making a difference uh, in a project that's available to anybody and can help somebody and a lot of people are using it around the world. Um, so a lot of people have described it as addictive. And uh, I'd also like to mention that another uh, requirement that we have for our interns is to blog every two weeks. And their blogs are being aggregated on the Women in Free Software Planet. And that's an amazing boost to, to read that planet and to see what they are uh, doing uh, during their internships. This is great. And also gives them visibility. So is there a website uh, that women who are interested in your program can visit and um, learn more and maybe participate? 
Absolutely. You should go to uh, gnome.org slash OPW, and uh, you'll find information about our program, how to apply, what participating organizations there are, and who is participating now. And uh, when is the next round opening? It is, uh, the application deadline uh, is uh, very similar in the time uh, to Google Summer of Code. Uh, for Outreach Program for Women, it's March 19. For Google Summer of Code, it's uh, March 21st. So uh, what we do for our May through August round is that we parallel the dates for Google Summer of Code because part of what we'd like to do is kind of going back to the original motivation uh, for the program. We want to encourage more women who are students, who are coders, uh, to apply for Google Summer of Code, and uh, that's part of what we do with the program. And so, for example, uh, last summer there were 10% uh, of the participants in Google Summer of Code were women, and the organizations that also participated in Outreach Program for Women had 14% uh, women among their participants in Google Summer of Code. Yeah, yeah, one great example of that is that is Wikimedia, for example, in all of the years of participating in Summer of Code, they had only ever had one applicant. And after participating in one round of Summer of Code, they had uh, seven female participants in Summer of Code. So the program has been really working. It's amazing. This is great. And I mean, I, the numbers, the percentages that you're uh, naming are absolutely not typical in um, you know, in the industry, and particularly in the open source project. So uh, great kudos for you for running this. Google's been a really um, a strong sponsor since the beginning of the program. Aside from just providing the model of Summer of Code and the fact that the two programs really work together, um, Google's sponsorship has been really important. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming on the program, Karen and Marina. Um, I'm looking forward to welcoming you back on the show again sometime. Uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Alex Meyer, and this is Women Tech Makers.